Okay, so let's talk about the Rin encephalon, what the components of it are, what terms like the olfactory bulb, olfactory tract, anosmia, which is loss of the sense of smell. And of course, the lateral olfactory stria and the medial olfactory stria, etc. are. If you actually look at what the rhinencephalon is composed of and what the structures are, it would be easiest to show you diagrams. So here you can see the olfactory bulb and how it goes posteriorly into the olfactory tract which then goes into, actually that would have been the lateral olfactory stria, which goes towards the temporal lobe and the medial olfactory stria. If we put this very, very simply, here would be like your nasal cavity, and as the smell would go up, at some point you would have the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone. Let me try and get a different color to show this. You would then have the cribriform plate of ethmoid bone. And to remember this, I always think of like the crib of a baby. So a baby's head would lie in a crib. So if this is a crib, here the baby's head would lie, okay? And just like the baby's head, we have a bulb, and that's the olfactory bulb. The olfactory bulb actually lies then in the cribriform plate. So the olfactory bulb lies in the cribriform plate, and the key stuff to remember here for the olfactory bulb would actually be OMI. Oh, so imagine a baby that's always saying OMI oh, or oh my. And that's because here we have mitral cells. Mitral cells. And these are the key cells or key neurons that are found within the olfactory bulb. And we have olfactory receptors within the nasal cavity as well. So you have olfactory receptors in nasal cavity. And the connection between the olfactory cells and the mitral cells, this connection, and obviously here, these are actually your second order neurons and your first order neurons are different, but we're going to focus on mitral cells for the purpose of this video. And the olfactory bulb is actually formed by the interconnections between these, and then the olfactory tract would be collections of neurons, or that would be your olfactory tract. Okay, then your olfactory tract would eventually split up into your lateral and medial olfactory stria. Lateral olfactory stria, medial olfactory stria. Now, what do you need to remember? Well, in the region of the olfactory bulb, you had mitral cells, which was OMI, whereas in the olfactory tract, you have AON. You have something called the anterior olfactory neuron. Now, let me try and show you how this will look in a diagram or in a diagrammatic way. So, here we had your olfactory bulb, and here you had the principal cells which were called mitral cells. And here, the collection of neurons was called olfactory tract. 
Now your olfactory tract is where you would find your anterior olfactory neurons. And actually, your anterior olfactory neurons are held together in place. So if I replicate that diagram, you have your olfactory bulb. And we said we had mitral cells here. So mitral, mitral, mitral. Through this, you would get your olfactory tract. Now, I'm telling you that within your olfactory tract, that is the location for your anterior olfactory nucleus. It's called your anterior olfactory nucleus. And the thing you need to remember for your anterior olfactory nucleus is that it's held in place by your anterior commissure. And what you need to know about the anterior commissure itself is that the anterior commissure has two parts. Its anterior part connects the two anterior olfactory nuclei because this was one anterior olfactory nucleus and of course you have two anterior olfactory nuclei so what holds them in place? the anterior commissure and the posterior part and you have the anterior part of the commissure you also have a posterior part of your anterior commissure. And your posterior part of your anterior commissure connects the symmetrical parts of the temporal lobe. And there's two ways to be specific here. You can say either the rostral part of temporal lobe or you can say the medial temporal gyrus and the inferior temporal gyrus and that's all you need to know for your anterior commissure now, the other things you need to know are the directions in which your lateral olfactory stria goes and the direction in which your medial olfactory stria goes, which I'll cover in the next part.